Hello, it's Heidi Fisher here with the Social Enterprise Online Festival and today I'm joined by John who's an expert in videos. Um, John, hello, hello. welcome. Um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background please John? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm uh, a videographer I suppose is what people might uh, type into Google if they want to find me. Um, I create um, video content for businesses, helping them to um, engage with their audience, get their messages across and generally show them off to the world. Um, yeah, so my, my background is that uh, it's something I studied uh, right from, from day one. Um, I knew that even when I was doing my GCSEs, I wanted to be a cameraman at the BBC. And um, so it's always been part of my life. I, I love television and uh, I always wanted to um, create video. And um, I've got a background in, um, I was a floor manager um, for a shopping te uh, telly, which is really glamorous, a bit Alan Partridge. Um, mm -hmm. I, I quit that uh, because actually I didn't really like, um, I didn't really like the people in TV. That sounds awful. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I always said if I went back into it, I'd go back in and do it for myself um, or that I would be in front of the camera and uh, you know me Heidi I don't like being in front of the camera so it was always <laughs> going to be um, doing it for myself so when uh, I discovered that the digital revolution took off the internet took off and I discovered that anybody can create video content mm. and so if there were people who weren't trained in video making video how much better could my video be um <laughs> so i kind of figured I'll, I'll get myself a camera and i've been building my um business uh for the last 10 years um working with businesses of all sizes um and uh, yeah helping them to um, communicate with their their customers and staff uh, and all sorts Great, yeah. So I I feel very honoured to have got you in front of a camera instead of you you being behind the camera because you're usually telling people what to do and um, giving them advice and tips for how to look better on video. And and today I've got you in front of a camera. Yeah. <laughs> look better on video, yeah. Don't have That's good. Um, so um, for me, I think the the um, when we met uh, it was about a year ago and. Um, um, I'd been putting off doing videos for for years, <laughs> yeah. um, and I don't think it's something. That, uh, I think it's something that a lot of other people experience as well. So, why why should we do videos for our businesses? Because they are the best communication tool um, online. I mean, that's the bottom line. And I think that your story is fairly typical of most business owners um, in, 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 in the country, in the world probably. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's, it's not just a British thing. It might be a British thing because I'm sure the Americans are quite, way, but uh, <laughs> it's probably uh, a bit of a British thing. We, we don't like being on, on camera and it's a real shame because video, I mean, we're all watching video now or we're, we're recording video and you guys watching it are watching video because it's a, a lot better way of communicating all this information than it would be if we were to give you a, a handout on paper or send around an email with all the information attached. It's just a nicer way of presenting information. Um, but what I find when I speak to business owners is that they are terrified of being on camera and, you know, going back to your story, it was five years or something. You'd had some, some videos that you wanted to create and for five years, we kind of took it off and it was lovely when you came to me and I use your story all the time now when I go <laughs> networking or, or whatever, because I think it's just a lovely, lovely story. The fact that you just, uh, thought, do you know what? I just need to get these done and made. Um, and so you made that sort of determined effort to get over yourself essentially and, and make it happen. And I'm not saying that's easy because I was kind of terrified coming on and doing this. I'm, I'm not comfortable. Um, you know, this is a nervous smile. It's, it's nothing <laughs> more than that. Um, so, so, um, it's a good way of masking my fear. Mm -hmm. But there are ways and there, there are tips and tricks of 
that uh, you can learn to to overcome that and in your first step what you know was just getting out there and, and doing that I'm not sure yeah. that's answered your question or not so. <laughs> yeah it has um so um obviously you saying now video is much easier for people to consume and 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 get the information they need much more easily then um i'm when i'm on facebook at the moment I think pretty much every single post has got a video on it now. And I feel like um, perhaps there's a little bit of overkill. Um, is there too much video out there? Um, is there going to come a point where where video loses its relevance because there's, there's too many people are doing it? I think that's a very good question. And yes, yeah, there is a lot of video out there. I mean, if you look at the stats, there's you know billions of users on YouTube. Um, some crazy stat of um you know i can't think what it is exactly it's, it's millions of hours of footage mm -hmm. uploaded to um youtube a day and like you say facebook is saturated with with video uh, having said that the, the posts which generally i do spend more time looking through and clicking through on our video mm -hmm. um i think that you're right in saying that video you, you know is there's there is almost too much of it what businesses need to be able to do is to differentiate themselves from the crowd and stand out and one way of doing that is just creating better video content or video content which is specifically targeted to their audience so it so it really speaks to that individual and the great thing about something like facebook is you can really target so i think think that we discovered each other possibly through a facebook advert that yeah. i put up yeah. which again my my advert was completely targeted at business owners who hated being on video um didn't uh, possibly have the time or the money to create fantastic video but just wanted to get get going and that's had you know it's, it's had the right response from the right people because you can target your your message and i think that if you do it well, video can have a massive impact on your business. But if you're just throwing video out for the sake of throwing video out and just becoming background noise to people, then generally it, it's like anything. It will just get lost in the melee of, of posts and emails and, and things like that. So having a clear strategy and idea and a way of going forward with your video um, is, is what is going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, what I'm seeing is a lot of people just feel that they 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 feel obligated to make a video, um, and there there isn't that clear plan or strategy. So um, what you're saying is really it needs to link into all all your other marketing and and you know what you're trying to do rather than you just saying oh let's make a video about our business or organisation or let's let's make a, a video about our staff or something yeah and, and, and all those things are great but they have to kind of fall into the the bigger picture so for example i had a, a conversation just today with with a, um, a kind of potential new client and it was for creating um some video at an event that they were were holding and they wanted to do some interviews with um some of their um franchisees and this, this that and the other and when I was uh, chatting through with them what it was that they wanted, they wanted to um, create uh, uh, questions, interviews um, around how fantastic it was being a franchisee. Brilliant. Great. Wonderful. Uh, you know, it, it needs to be done. Yeah. Was doing that at their <laughs> staff AGM necessarily the right yeah. place to be doing that? Um, because actually going to the actual uh, franchisees uh, building getting shots of their uh, setup and making it very personal um, is a much better way of presenting that than a, mm. a busy agm yes you you can have something around the idea of um I'm glad I signed up to be a franchisee, but I think for something, it's knowing the purpose. So what I was trying to um, say and what we were talking about was actually, let's talk about the fact that we're here at this event, how the company look after everybody, mm -hmm. the fact that we're all having a good time and creating just a, a little piece of content there around that piece, which might not be 
uh, have the immediate um, impact that they want going on long term, but, but about putting that into a, a bigger strategy um, of creating creating video. Because the temptation is just to create everything all right. Oh, we've got the opportunity to have this interview and, and, and get that done. Let's just get the content. And that's where you get those sort of messy, hard to listen to. Does it fit together? Does the message, is it on point? All those things. Um, it just needs a little bit of longer term thought and you can create, you know, you can start building a library of video footage that you can then start pulling out and uh, bringing out on the right occasion and uh, giving the right message to the right people at the right time. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so would you say um, people should script videos or not? Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> good question. So um, uh, like I was saying, I hate being on, on video. Um, mm -hmm. And the thing that terrifies me is just, you know, it's, uh, it's fluffing up, but video just isn't like public speaking. I mean, it is a bit now because this is live essentially. Um, but it's worth remembering when you're uh, kind of fearful of going in front of video, that video isn't live essentially. You can start, you can stop. If you're not bound by time constraints, you can have as many goes as you like to get it right. So if I fluff up and you know say the wrong thing, we just stop and we start again. No one died, the world didn't stop, we just carry on. And I think it's getting that mentality um, across uh, that, that just, you know, people go, yeah, you know what? doesn't really matter, does it? Um, and I think that there are, there are different uh, times to use the different methods. So should it, should it be scripted or, or not scripted? Mm -hmm. For me, the script is a safety net. It, mm -hmm. it, um, it means I've got all the content there. Um, I run these video productivity days and we use an auto cue. So um, I, I wave my hand in front, in front of my face because it, it literally means that the words are there right in front of you, scrolling up in front of the screen and you just read them. Um, as you would a book and there are ways of making that come to life and put an expression into it um, you know it, if you just read it in a monotone voice it, it will be pretty obvious so so there are kind of techniques in using a script uh, and, and in some ways it's actually a lot a lot harder than just going free flow but for a lot of people free flow um, you know can be quite daunting um, just to stand in front of the camera and, and talk free flowing. So I encourage using the auto cue to kind of get people over that fear. But I think that it's a bit like, um, uh, can I bring politics into this? I just, <laughs> I just you really must. <laughs> uh, always a da dangerous and dodgy ground. Mm -hmm. I was just listening to um, Five Live on the radio and um, it was the, uh, conservative party conference and Theresa May is making a speech and one of the party delegates um, came in and uh, they were talking about Theresa May having to make the speech and where it went wrong in the last election and the, the, the delegate said you know, because they'd been talking about Theresa May um, having rehearsed this speech for months and he said we don't want to rehearse speech we want somebody that speaks from the heart and he said, that's what Jeremy Corbyn was doing. And that's what was speaking to the nation. There was somebody who, who and I'm sure Corbyn's obviously got his spin around him and all those things. And I'm not suggesting that he's just totally going, you know, off the cuff. <laughs> but, but that was the impression that, that, that was given that um, this scripted, very tight business, this is what we're doing, didn't speak to people. It didn't affect where they were at and actually I think it's kind of true in our business sometimes we can be very scripted very tight it comes across like the PPI sales adverts and, and you're just like do I believe this person is it something or are they somebody that I could work with are they a company that I want to buy from or have a business working relationship with so the script has its place um, and actually if you're creating something a bit longer term and you want to create an about me or um, you know, it's a welcome video or, or anything like that. You know, there, there is a place for it of getting the right word in at the right time in the right way. But actually somebody speaking from the heart and just going for it. Mm. Often are the, the videos that really get shared around because people know when somebody's pulling the wool over their eyes, don't they? People mm. like people, so. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It's 
Um, not always easy though, <laughs> when you, like you okay. say, when you're in front of the camera. <laughs> no, um, I, I, sorry, I just say, I, I, because I use my video days and I create some videos myself, and um, I was going to do a, a video testimonial for my business coach. Um, and I stood in front of the camera, I'll just wing this, I'll just do it off the cuff. I, honestly, I couldn't get past the first three, three, <laughs> three sentences without mm. just stumbling and then cursing myself and, and mm. going to start again. In the end, I just gave up doing it. I thought, I'm going to have to script this because I can't, can't do it. Mm. I'm probably overthinking it, but, yeah. um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a presenter. I'm much more comfortable behind the camera. But, um, but I realised, actually, I have to get over myself just as much as the next person and, and get out there. And I have noticed a difference. Um, since going in front of the camera and selling what I do. Um, I'm a video guy that doesn't use video to sell himself. <laughs> kind of ridiculous, frankly. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. so um, should we aim for a perfect video? Like you say, you know, you, you can redo it as many times as you want. Um, when do we say, okay, that that's acceptable? <laughs> Uh, we'll take a look at any of my videos <laughs> and, that, um, and you'll see. Um, I think that it, it really depends, again, on how is the video being used, who's it going out to, what's the message that you're giving. Um, I, I think there's a place for creating off-the-cuff iPhone videos. You know, don't get me wrong, there, there is a, there's a time and a place for that. You know, if you're out and about, you see something and you just want to do a cheeky little blog, um, stick it up on Facebook, show your, you know, your audience, um, fans, for want of a better, better word. Um, you know, there's a place for that. And, and I think that if you're um, obviously clear that that's what you're doing, brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think what frustrates me is when somebody uh, wants to get a really clear message, speak to um, an audience that are a bit more, or, or want something that's going to impress them a little, a little bit more, uh, and they, and they, you know, whip out the camera and say, you know, that that'll do. That's that's what frustrates me. Um, or if somebody is pretending to get that shaky look and, and it is just just awful there are ways of there are ways of doing it um there's a client who were creating video if if she had taken the camera and filmed it herself that's what i was gonna say it would have been better than <laughs> them trying to replicate the blog because what was obvious was that they just had a bad videographer <laughs> so, oh dear. So, so, um, and they, and they were going, no, we were trying to get that bad look. So, what about, um, what, what's been your, your worst experience where you've been trying to record video for somebody? Oh, worst experience. <laughs> Do you know, I, I don't think I've had like a, a terrible, terrible, I mean, I am you know, starting, starting out, um, doing wedding videos, um, you know, and, and just those you know, weddings uh, are wonderful for the bride and groom and they're hell for everyone else. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, you, you, you make, make the most of it. And I remember doing, um, doing one wedding and it's the first time I'd ever used rechargeable batteries and I've never used them since because we got about uh, two verses into the first hymn and the batteries went on the, uh, on the audio pack. <laughs> And I was like, no, oh, what do I do? Um, and thankfully the photographer that we were with um, had some other batteries um, and he was like, I'll, I'll swap them, which was, which was good. Uh, Cause sometimes you find that the photographers at weddings can be like, oh, you messed up. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that, that's on a kind of a personal kind of nightmare that thankfully has never happened since. Um, but I think, the worst things is when you you go to do a shoot and um, they're often, these, these are people in businesses who talk in front of hundreds of people every day or, you know, every week at least. Um, and, uh, and you put them in front of a video camera and they, they just fall apart. And um, I think the worst bit is when you, you realise that somebody is just 
getting themselves wound up and in, in a bit of a fluss and just can't pull themselves out of it. And you try every trick and, and you say, well, let, let's stop. Let's take a breather. Let's walk away. Let's come back. And they just can't get it out of their head. For, I think for me, that's, um, that's the bit that uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, I don't find it hard because I, I'm quite, I'm quite a patient guy and I, I'm happy to work, work with it and work, work through it. And we do, it just takes time. It's just that I feel sorry for the person that I'm putting through the, their paces because it just, yeah, nobody likes feeling like that. And um, so for me, that's, that's the worst bit is seeing somebody, you know, you feel like you're pulling teeth out and, yeah, no mm -hmm. anaesthetic. <laughs> <It's> that, <laughs> that, is, is there anyone you'd say um, don't do video if they're if they're that or traumatized and, or that awful in front of a camera? Well, Have you ever said to somebody, I, "I don't think you're meant for video"? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I I've been <laughs> but, um, no, I think that there is infinite value in putting yourself on video mm -hmm. um, because essentially people buy from people you are putting yourself out there um and there's often that thing well if, if you're just a name uh, mm -hmm. then who are you really so there is real value in training yourself getting yourself comfortable in front of video because let's be honest the, you know it's not going away um until three 3D holographic images and we just beam ourselves into people's offices we're stuck with video for the time being mm -hmm. the, the kids love it my daughter who is just turned six did a, a homework project I've never seen her use a camera before but she picked it up instantly you know put it in front of her face and started talking like a YouTube blogger without any fear I, I couldn't you know I couldn't believe it um, she and it's just what what people do um, there are ways around not being on video. Mm. Um, one, of course, is get a presenter. You know, there are plenty of um, presenters out there who would do a fantastic job. Uh, and I know a number of um, presenters who would come on screen and present for you. But it's, again, it goes about the right message, the right time, uh, in the right place. Um, and you can get away with it, you know, for, mm. for a number of videos, but there are some key messages that only you can deliver. Yeah. No point in you delivering a, you know, a, a ton of messages to your staff, but getting a presenter to, you know, we're going to be laying off a load of people, um, right, get that presenter in. <laughs> <laughs> it's, mm. it's got to come from you, um, you know, or we're changing um, policy or um, we're, we're changing our values. And values come from the top. It's got to come from you. Um, you know, getting a presenter and it's just, it, it, like I say, it works, but it can seem hollow if it's the wrong message being delivered by a presenter. So it's just being clear again, what is the message? Who's my audience? Um, how does that then need to be delivered? Okay. So um, you talk, talked in there about um, having training to, to be better at being on video. What, what kind of things would, would you do with somebody if they weren't very good in, in terms of being on video? So, what kind of training would you give them? Yeah, well, um, I run uh, a video presenter basics masterclass with mm -hmm. uh, a lady called Gemma Hunt, who, um, for those of you with children of a certain age, you <laughs> might recognise her from the show Swashbuckle. And, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, uh, she's a pirate gem, and she is lovely. She is just a really lovely person. Um, and she uh, will come in and um, work with you. Um, I run these workshops um, as kind of group sessions, but we're looking at um, going into businesses individually um, to run with a large groups of staff. So that's something that we're uh, working on at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, those can happen on a one-to-one -one basis. So you can have, um, you know, Gemma work alongside you and give tips, handy hints, um, you know, right there on the spot. And I, I just recently did a, a public speaking uh, course for, for the same reason. I, I'm not a big fan of public speaking. And, um, and I just, you know, wanted to know how to improve um, the way I present. 
and um, going on that course just gave me the confidence and and just so many little things that I hadn't noticed that I do when I speak in public and they were like oh you shift around a lot like that it's like just <laughs> try standing on the spot you know <laughs> or or if you're going to you know if you're going to move move deliberately move with a, with a purpose and it, it's just the same there, there are different techniques to talking on video um than there are to you know speaking publicly they're, they're not the same um you know identically the same that there are some crossovers but there are little things that you can do which can make a massive difference um to a feeling confident and just you know having a better um presentation on screen i guess sometimes i think when um, we do videos they they do come across a little bit flat so is it a case of exaggerating everything a little bit when you're on video yeah. and, and going, ah. absolutely. so we're having a conversation now yeah and i'm just talking i suppose i'm a little bit more excited partly because of the nerves <laughs> so, so I, I kind of want to uh, you know a kind of a, a bit of a level but if, if we were just talking now and we we're just having a conversation i'm saying so um i've got this thing happening and um i need to get a message across to my audience but i'm not quite sure how i'm going to do that it's a bit bland monotone because we're having that conversation there it's perfectly fine nothing wrong mm. with it now if i was talking on video i'd be more like and i'm not a presenter so <laughs> just see this but i would have to lift uh my, my presentation so uh, i've got this idea that i need to get across on video uh, but I'm not really quite sure how to do that could you tell me Heidi there's a yeah. there's a difference I wouldn't talk to you naturally like that but actually on video when I lift my tone when I lift the energy actually it brings the um, the video to life a bit more rather mm -hmm. than if I was just talking um, like this all the time and just uh, Heidi I need to get that message across <laughs> and um, it's gonna be so yeah it, essentially uh, presenters are actors actresses um and and we we just need to project that image um you know that bit inside of us and, and kind of that's where that getting over ourselves and generally my rule is if you think you've gone too far with it you probably haven't gone far enough um, so um yeah it, it is a case of you know maybe stand in front of a, a mirror and it's, it's those obvious those things and just have a look at yourself see well that's quite over the top um I, I think it generally helps if you can get somebody that you trust to look at <laughs> what, what you um what you've produced and and to give you an honest opinion uh, i i would do that um to the best of my ability when i work with with somebody um because i, I just think actually at the end of the day they want to look the best that that they can and i'll only push somebody as far as i know that they can can go so the, the more i work with somebody the, the more i know i can push them and, and elevate their performance slightly and, and so it is a, a bit of a case of getting to know and feeling comfortable um with somebody um and i think that does make a world of difference uh, I, I see it in my own videos when i um create them myself and i look back and i think oh, i thought i was giving that everything and i look back and they're a little bit mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because i i don't have somebody the other side just telling me you need to raise your game a bit you know so just just a little bit more energy here or it's going a little bit flat halfway through because we have a tendency to do that to start really well and then just to drift off by the end <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah okay brilliant that's um been really interesting um hearing all these um tips and ideas around um videos so um, just to finish off, what would be your um, top three tips for people that haven't um, done video before? Okay. Um, my top three tips uh, for people that haven't ever done video before. My first tip would be to actually do some video <laughs> um, because like you can put it off and you can put it off Heidi for about five years maybe um, <laughs> maybe longer <laughs> maybe longer maybe you yeah. went to the um, and uh, and actually by putting creating your first video and realizing that like I said before nobody died the world's still revolving um, we're all still here can just make a massive difference it I remember I made my first video put it out there and thought, yeah, that feels good. I want to make another now. 
um, because it's not too bad. The feedback I got was good. It's not the greatest video in the, in the world. I'm talking from my performance, of course, the video was wonderful. Um, but, but um, you know, there, there are things I need to do to improve, but it's like anything, the more you do it, the, the better you will, you'll get at doing it. So actually get over yourself and, and think about creating your first video. If, even if you don't even use it and you just put it down to um, experience, You've got it there and you can learn from it. Say, so, okay, well, why don't I like that video? I look too serious. I, there's not enough expression. Okay, well, we can work on that. Mm. Let's, so, so first um, one is to actually go out and do something. Okay. Uh, the second tip, I'm gonna to refer to my notes here, um, would be to actually put some thought, one, into the content, um and two into uh the background that that you're using because actually that does say um a lot about us so i have cleverly constructed the background around me to avoid all the mess my children have made so <laughs> so um just be aware um you know i, I cleared the mantelpiece i'm giving away all my secrets um because clutter um you know what do you want to say about yourself um you know the little things are important in video and they they can make um, a, a massive difference so just have a think about not only the content but where you're recording is it well lit and what is the, the background because subliminally we are taking in information all the time we're making judgments based on everything around us um and my third tip for uh people who have never created video is um, just to have fun with it. Just remember what it was like when you first had a video camera, maybe as a kid or your uncle came and shot some video or your best friend had one and just have fun because the best videos are the videos which are funny essentially. And, and they're the ones that get shared, aren't they? And that's not to say that every video needs to be funny, uh, not at all, but, creating videos should be fun it shouldn't be anything other than that it's it's um i i when i think about what i do um it's kind of laughable <laughs> you know yeah. you go in and, and and we you know we create small tv programs and i was, I was talking to my dad the other day he was at one of these stately homes he said oh they were shooting a um shooting a, a drama there and mm -hmm. uh, he was saying, oh, some, somebody on, on their walkie-talkie said, yes, the bride is ready, but, but there's not enough blood. And, and <laughs> <laughs> it just, you're going, we're all just playing. Mm -hmm. It's just playing. So have fun and, and play. That would be my, my tips. Okay, brilliant. Um, what about for people that have already done some videos and anything that they should be thinking about? Yes, absolutely. Um, the first question he says as he looks down to his notes, <laughs> did I get away with it? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> um, the first question that I would ask uh, of myself and of my videos is, can I raise the production value of those videos? Um, is the content that I'm creating uh, right for my audience and the way that it's being presented is that right so ask yourself that question seriously so what is the image that I am portraying because it is your calling card it's the first thing people are seeing and if it's sloppy or if it's you know done badly effectively then that's the impression you are giving to others um, when they see you on Facebook so can I raise um, the production value? Uh, it would be my, my first question. My second question, as I sneakily look down, um, would be, uh, what do I want my videos to actually achieve? So to think through um, the purpose of your videos. Like we said at the beginning, just because you can create a video, doesn't mean to say you should make a video. Um, everything needs to have a purpose um, and that can be thought through. I um, often sit down with my clients and we talk about well, what content could we create? So what's all the, what are all the messages that you want to get? What do you want to achieve from your video? Do I want to, want to become an authority? Um, do I just want to get some key messages out? Are they predominantly sales videos? Are they product videos? Are they going to be on Facebook? So what and where? So have to, to actually sit down and, and construct a, a sort of a video content stroke marketing plan that says, if we're gonna use video, let's use it effectively. 
Um, and then the third question that I would, I would ask is, can I, as a business owner, effectively do that um, by myself or with the team that I already have? Or do I need to look at bringing in an outside source to help create that content? And um, yeah, they, they, they would be my tips because what you'll find is that video or creating good video takes time and it takes thought. Um, and having somebody that can sit down with you and go through that with you and to help you construct your ideas and put that across in a creative um, way um, actually yeah pro possibly takes a different skill set to the team that you have around you and the, the time that's involved as well um, is often one, one of the things people I, I find that uh, a lot of business owners say well we've bought a camera we've bought ourselves a green screen we've done this but actually we've got to set it up light it shoot it then we've got to edit it then we've got to look at it and we go we don't really like it anyway um, so we're never going to use it and and then you've got to store all of that stuff so you know is it more effective to, to bring somebody else in um, that would be my mm -hmm. third point okay brilliant thank you so much for joining me today john it's been lovely talking to you and finding out about how we can use video more in our um, businesses and organizations um if people do want to get in touch with john to um, find out how he can help you more with doing your videos his details will be underneath the um video um so you'll be able to just get in touch with him um and it's been really interesting finding out about how to make better videos so thank you for joining me today john no problem thank you thank you all right well take care then bye bye